Hello and welcome to today's mini lecture on steric strain and Newman projections. So I'm going to be discussing a very simple uh, explanation of steric strain, how it works, and a way to think about it and visualize it in your own head. And then I'll go over some examples of Newman projections and how that relates to steric strain because basically Newman projections are all dependent on steric strain and how energy levels differ between different rotations of a uh, molecule around a certain bond. So steric strain is the idea that things, or like atoms specifically for chemistry, they don't want to like share space. So they want to have as much distance between each other as possible because that means that they're going to have lower energy. So a way to visualize steric strain is using a pencil and a piece of paper. So if you have these two things and you use them as the pencil being an atom, that's a substituent group off of a main chain, and the paper also representing another atom or a substituent group, and you want them closer together. Well, that's going to mean adding some energy. So if you're trying to make two atoms occupy the same space, you're going to have to put some energy into the system. And that is going to make it less stable. And so, in order to make a pencil and paper occupy the same space, you add energy to be able to push the pencil through. And now they're sharing the same space, but you've also decreased the stability of this system, or this molecule. You've also increased the energy of this because you had to put energy into it in order to get it in this state where they're sharing this uh, space. So I'm going to give you two examples of drawing Newman projections and how to go about thinking when drawing your Newman projections. And so the first thing that you want to establish is what bond are you going to be looking down when you're drawing your projection? So basically what that means is identifying what bond you're looking at. So in this case over here, it's the four and five carbon uh, bond right here. And just remember, so for this example, these numbers are arbitrary. You can number them either way. At eight, it doesn't matter one to eight. But really, for this specific example, the numbers don't really matter. I just wanted to number them so that you could see which bond we're going to. So we're looking down the four or five bond. And so now you can identify what your groups are. So you have a three carbon group and you have another three carbon group. So that means you're gonna have one of them, one of the uh, Newman projections, um, bound to a propyl, or CH2, CH2, CH3. And then also bound to hydrogens. Now, depending on the way that you are going to draw this first one, because there are six different Newman projections for, but uh, let's start with the eclipsed uh, version. So this back carbon, so these three lines in the front represent this four carbon right here. This circle represents this back carbon, the number five there. So let's now draw on the group that is with on the number five carbon. So that's also a CH2, CH2, CH3. And then it also has a hydrogen and another hydrogen. So now we have this, but that means we have these two groups being pretty close to each other. That's going to put this at a really high energy level. As we talked about with steric strain, because these two groups are so close together, because they're literally in line with each other, we need to have higher amounts of energy in order to have them that close. So if we rotate this 60 degrees, that would give us a projection that is a little bit more stable because now we have a group that is offset and staggered from the other group that is also significantly large. And so because we now have this staggered form, this is significantly more stable than this form because of the fact that it is 
there's, we're decreasing the amount of uh, steric strain by increasing the amount of space between the two groups. Now, this staggered version, so this is eclipsed, and this is staggered, but this specific version, where you have two groups that aren't just hydrogens, this version where it's 60 degrees off is what's called the gouache conformation. And so then if you were to rotate this again, you would get that the CH group is here, eclipsed again, increasing energy. You would then rotate again, and after two rotations, so I'm gonna say this is 120 degrees that we're rotating just because I skipped a 60 degree rotation. Then you would get something that kind of looks this similar stagger here, but you would get that the two groups are on opposite sides. And having those two groups on opposite sides means that you've increased the distance between the two groups as far as they can go. So from the original eclipsed model that we have here to here, you rotate it 180 degrees. So going from right next to each other, or not next to each other, but in line with each other to completely opposite of each other. So now this is also staggered, but because this it has the most distance between the two groups, we call this the anti-staggered conformation. So this is what we would consider the lowest uh, energy and the most stable. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. We're actually going to use the same molecule that we have here, which is octane because it's an eight carbon chain. So because we're going to look at this same molecule, you can have different Newman projections because Newman projections are looking at a single bond and how the groups are related to each other energy-wise for a single bond that is in the molecule. Let's say you look at the 2,3 bond here. That's going to give you a different Newman projection than these ones that we did earlier. So if we go down and look down this 2,3 single bond, we now know that we have a single carbon off of the 2 bond, and we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon chain off of the 3 bond. So that means when we're making our initial eclipsed version, we're going to have circle this front one. If we're looking from this side towards the 2 bond, this front one is 2. And so we know that it only has a 1 carbon CH3 group off of it. And then the rest are hydrogens. And then this uh, 3 carbon has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to have a very large group, which I'm just going to do CH2, 4, and CH3. We can see that this very large group of five carbons is very close to this very small group of one carbon. This is still the eclipsed version, but it's looking down this bond as opposed to looking down this bond. And so because of that, this is different but it also has the most energy level for looking down this bond still because the eclipsed version always has the highest energy. So then we can go and we can make our staggered version, which would be, again, we would have the CH2, 4, CH3, then we have CH3. So we go ahead and make our gouache standard uh, staggered conformation. And again, these two groups are now further apart, meaning lower in energy, but they're also still somewhat close together. In order to look down the 2-3 carbon bond and have the most stable and lowest energy conformation, we would have to do the anti-conformation. So we draw, it's a staggered version and it has the two substituent groups 
as far apart as possible. And now this is the most stable because this is the anti-conformation. So let's take a look at how these uh, different conformations relate to specifically energy levels. And so we have a graph that we can make, which is potential energy on the, on the uh, y-axis, and there's rotation of the bond on the x-axis. And so again, so for this specific one, we're looking at the 4,5 carbon. And so because we have this idea of eclipse, gouache, and anti, we can look at these different energy levels. The eclipse being the highest uh, for this conformation, we have it at this high energy level. But then the gouache version brings it down lower to a more stable conformation, but it's still not that low in terms of potential energy, it's still significantly higher than something like the anti. And then there's actually another eclipsed. It's not as high energy as this version of the eclipsed, where we have the two large groups next to each other, because basically once we rotate 120 degrees, we now have a hydrogen close to this other group, which it's not going to be as bad as having the two groups next to each other, but it's still going to be higher in energy than any staggered form. So that brings our energy levels back up. And then when we rotate again to our staggered anti-conformation, that's going to bring us down significantly lower than even the uh, gouache conformation. And so this right here is our anti-conformation. Then we go back up to another eclipse where we have the group next to another hydrogen. We go back down for a gouache where now we have this group over here. And then we go back to our eclipsed version that we started with, where we have the two groups next to each other. So remember that there's always going to be three eclipsed and three staggered versions. But there's not always going to be eclipsed, gouache, and anti, because if you have the same groups, let's say if all of the groups off of the carbons were hydrogens, then you would have three equal energy eclipsed and three equal energy staggered. So gouache and anti are only to distinguish when you have differences in energies because of where the position of the groups are. And so if you have different groups on the atoms, you're going to have different energy levels in the gouache and anti-conformations. Although the two gouache conformations, those two conformations are the exact same energy level. And that's why we see the gouache energy levels being the same. And same with the eclipse where it's the hydrogen being next to the group, those are going to be the same because it's still the same amount of distance between the same types of groups. This is a hydrogen interacting with the group, and this would be a hydrogen interacting with the group. So it's going to be the same energy levels for those versions. So that's why we can see these two being the same energy level and these two being the same energy level, because they're essentially the same thing, but rotating. I hope that I was able to clear up some confusion if there was any around steric strain, Newman projections, how things overlap, why different, uh, different versions of a Newman projection are at higher or lower energy and more stable or less stable. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and leave a comment if you need to. Um, or most of you could just direct message me. I'll be posting this and putting it up in the playlist for chapter two. Good luck on the quiz this week. Uh, I'll try to get out a lecture on how uh, iso isomers of cyclohexane work and how those uh, stability-wise uh, are able to be determined and how you can look at those in order to figure out what is the most stable and least uh, 
lowest in energy conformation of cyclohexane, because I know that is a typical topic of confusion. Hope you enjoyed the lecture today. I'll see you all in class.